Hi guys, I'm James from Truefone. I'm Olivia from Mobuzz. Today is Thursday, the 29th of October. And welcome to Mobuzz TV. James Bowley came into the office yesterday to chat to us about Truefone, a VOIP service that routes all your mobile calls via Wi Fi. And we managed to get a pretty cool exclusive a voice over IP on an iPhone. Take a look. Okay, so tell me, what have we done so far? Well, we've taken the iPhone and we put a voice over IP application on it. Okay, cool. And uh, just to prove it, I'm going to show you. But before we do that, I'd like to show you that uh, this is our phone with no SIM card in. Okay, so it says no service. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, so this is purely voice over IP. And in a second, hopefully your funny little Sony Ericsson My phone should... Rubbish phone will ring. Should ring. And there we go. There we go. Do Hang on a second. Up? Hello. Hello, Olivia. How are you? I'm Hello. fine. So Hello we have works. voice over IP on the iPhone. Voice over IP on the iPhone. And the quality is good, isn't it? Ex it is good, yeah. yeah. It's a bit strange, but... <laughs> there we are. Excellent. OK. Perfect. Thank you. There we go. Voice over IP on the iPhone, guys. If you want to take a look at how it all works, visit their site at truephone.com. They've got a good offer on free calls to 40 countries running until the end of the year. Sticking with mobiles, I think it's pretty normal for most schools to ask their students not to use their phones while at school. But it seems that the teachers at Mason High in Ohio have taken it one step further. Students and parents have complained that administrators are confiscating their mobiles in order to read their text messages. The reason? The teachers think they have a right to know if their students have attended any private parties during the weekend. A little OTT, don't you think? Well, the American Civil Liberties Union have issued a warning to the school saying that private student social activities are issues for the parents, not for the teachers. Nintendo are charging ahead and taking over the gaming world if their record sales of Wii and DS are anything to go by. The Thanksgiving week resulted in over 1 million DS and Wii units sold, considering the previous Thanksgiving sales record was held by the Game Boy Advance in 2005 with sales of 600,000 units in a week. So if you were looking to fill some stockings with some Nintendo goodies this Christmas, get shopping. They seem to be in high demand. Speaking of gaming, that reminds me, football. Yeah, it's a little crappy and not to mention embarrassing that England spectacularly crashed out of Euro 2008 last week. Good one, boys. But there are excuses and then there are excuses. West Ham goalie Robert Green has come up with a beauty as he reckons that the cause of the defeat is gaming. Yep, in Green's words, we would have been the best team if we could go into every household and throw away every PlayStation, Xbox and video game. I assume he's referring to the fact that the UK is turning into a nation of gaming couch potatoes instead of getting out there and kicking a ball about. But I mean, please, accept it. You played rubbish. Leaving sporting failures behind, Google are doing some new stuff. Again. First up is their announcement of the catchily titled Google Highly Open Participation Contest, a competition that aims to introduce secondary and high school students to open source software development. They've joined forces with a variety of open source projects like Moin Moin, Mono and Moodle, who set a list of tasks the project needs help with. So stuff like bug fixes, documentation and research, which are then assessed against contributions from other students. The contest finishes on the 22nd of January and amongst the prizes is a trip to the Googleplex. The next piece of news coming out of the Google sphere is that it obviously didn't feel that its pollution application on Google Earth was doing enough to save the planet. It's announced that it'll be investing a lot of money in order to help develop clean energy technologies that are cheaper than coal. Larry Page is thinking that solar thermal and wind energy are the big hopes of the greener planet. The initiative is being run through Google.org, seeing as it really doesn't have anything to do with organizing the world's information. How successful they will be in saving the planet single-handedly is another matter, but you've got to admit, guys, if anyone can do it, Google can. And last, but definitely not least, Verizon Wireless have told the world that they're opening its wireless network to wireless devices, software and applications not offered by the company. The aim is to have the new choice available to customers throughout the US by the end of 2008. Verizon seem to be envisioning a situation where hobbyists and little hardware companies will be able to get their equipment approved. But surely it'll be the big boys like Nokia and co who will benefit the most from this decision. They'll be able to create handsets and pre-installed applications with their own software and then sell them direct to Verizon customers. So that's everything for today. I hope I managed to lift those dark November days a little. I'll see you tomorrow.